the baseball is back, and so are your World Series champion Texas Rangers, winning, winning a thrilling extra inning walk-off that shows this team is not like last year's World Series champion team. It's even better. All that and more on this episode of Locked On Rangers. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Rangers, your daily Texas Rangers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are locked onto the World Series champion Texas Rangers. I'm Bryce Patrick, a creepingly addicted Texas Rangers fan covering this team for 11 seasons, including all six as the founder and host of this podcast. Thank you all so much for making Locked On Rangers your first listen every single day. If you're not already, you can follow me on Twitter at Bryce Patrick. You can follow the show at Locked On Rangers. Hit subscribe on your favorite podcasting platform and on YouTube, where the best way you can help grow the show is to comment nearly any single thing below. Now, today is March 28th. Opening day, your Rangers are 1-0 atop the AL West all by themselves as of this recording. We'll see if the A's can can eke out a win and and maybe join the Rangers up there uh, or maybe the Mariners too. But for right now, the next however many hours, your Rangers are atop the AL West after an absolutely thrilling, enjoyable, wild, mind-numbing, frustrating, and exhilarating opening day as your reigning World Series champs. Now, the day started a little later than I would have personally liked. I would have loved for baseball to be going all day, but that that's not where we were. But one thing that I did like, even though it ended up with a million games overlapping, is that everyone was watching this game for the Rangers. Now, everybody, Every baseball fan was watching this game specifically. This was the only game going on. All attention was on the reigning World Series champs, as it should be, in their resplendent gold uniforms, looking quite dapper, if I do say so myself, unveiling the flag that flies forever, the ginormous flag that flies forever, parading around that World Series champion trophy, and just rubbing it in the faces of literally everybody these are the defending champs until at least October, maybe November, depending on how long the World Series goes and how long it takes for the Rangers to repeat as champs, because this team is better than the World Series champion 2023 Texas Rangers. This is a better team, objectively. This was a phenomenal opening day, a little maybe less wacky in terms of just overall offensive output and bloop nonsense that happened in last year's opening day you might remember the what it felt like the rangers scored 16 runs maybe that was the second day and game one was 11 runs this one a four to three final in extra innings which the rangers were horrendous at winning extra inning games last year because of their bullpen and i'll talk more about the bullpen providing four shutout innings outside of you know with with competent umpiring it would have been you know fewer than than four shutout innings because it would have been three shutout innings because the game would have been over because El Blondie would have hit a walk-off bump. This game had everything. It had an intentional walk to a 22-year-old rookie with, at that point, three plate appearances in the big leagues. Incredibly, incredibly respectful. And maybe overly respectful from Hector Neres. Just, I don't want a piece of this 18, this, sorry, 18 year old kid. He's not 18. He's 22. He's, he's so old. He's not 18. He's 22. And also a home run, a pinch hit game tying home run from El Blondi of all people pinch hitting for Ezekiel Duran, not Jared Walsh pinch hitting for the guy who was starting at first base. No, your bench outfielder. And he hits a home run. As many home runs as he had last season, he has already got as many this year. Picks up right where he left off in the postseason where he should have had two home runs if not for him being robbed um, by Kyle Tucker in right field in Game 7. This was just uh, a beautiful, beautiful moment for the Rangers. And it was a game-tying home run, not a walk-off home run because of a blunder by an umpire and a blunder by Jonah Heim, who... You know, gave the umpire the benefit of the doubt, which is something that you should never do if you're Jonah Heim, because I'm pretty sure that that uh, that celebration 
for that home run of the review call the day after in Chicago. I, I don't know why, but it feels like that's being held against him. Maybe that's just my own personal conspiracies bleeding over into this. But a pass ball that was foul tipped by the batter at the plate with runners on first and second. It was just after a what should have been strike three borderline check swing call that allowed the second walk of the inning from Jose Leclerc in the ninth inning as the Rangers close in a tie game coming in there. And you had runners on first and second, the ball gets away, and, and Jonah Heim knows that the ball is foul tipped, and so the runners can't advance on a foul tip. This is with two outs. And the umpire says, no, nah, I don't know what a foul tip is, and uh, you can't review that, and uh, too bad, suck it up. And Jonah Heim is, is pleading his case. This ball is not squirted away that far from him. It's really not that far if he just looks for it for a second. Instead of saying the umpire, hey, that that's a foul tip. He, foul ball. He cannot advance. Why are you letting these guys advance? And the Rangers couldn't review it. And so instead of you know going and getting the ball, runner goes from second all the way and scores on that, what it was ruled a wild pitch, but should have been just a foul ball. It should have been Jose Leclerc getting out of it, and it should have been a walk-off home run from Travis Jankowski. Pinch hit, walk-off home run from Travis Jankowski, which I would have lost my gosh darn mind if that was the way this one ended. Instead, it ended with a walk-off single. Should have been a three-run double if it were another inning. And I, I feel very annoyed that these players who get what should have been like doubles and you know add to their stats, pad a little bit, three RBIs as opposed to one. But because it's a walk-off, everyone goes station to station with the bases loaded. And Jonah Heim redeems himself for his mistake and also for the umpire's mistake and gives the Rangers a walk-off to remember on opening day, their first opening day as reigning World Series champs. And that came right before a bases loaded, ground out by Wyatt Langford. I swear if Wyatt Langford had hit a walk-off Grand Slam to cap his first game in the big leagues, I think I might have literally died from pure joy. I think that was Wyatt saving us from ourselves on that one. Because once Adoles Garcia worked that walk to, to load the bases, and, and also shout out to, to Josh Young, in this one, working two walks. The first one was a nine-pitch an, a nine pitch walk and then also had an eight-pitch double. Just a fantastic day at the plate and at you know in the field and on the mic <laughs> because he was mic'd up. And, of course, he had two balls hit right to him when he was mic'd up in the field for ESPN. A couple of very nice plays for him at third base. Pretty routine, though, and just got very excited, very charming, very affable, very proud of, of my young large adult son, my, my young large adult son, Josh Young, and just having a great, great day and two walks for Josh Young. I said it all week, especially on my bold predictions claim, is that if Josh Young can can be the hitter that I think he is, which the hitter I think he is is a very darn good hitter whose ceiling I don't think that we've seen, and go from you know one of the least walk players in baseball, one of the most striking out players in baseball, both those in the bottom, I believe 16% of baseball last year. If he can get those more around league average, maybe league average is, is a big ask, but if he can walk at a league average rate, then I think he is going to be a silver slugger. I think he might hit 35, 40 bombs this year and have the kind of breakout season that Adoles Garcia did last year. Because Adoles Garcia was also one of the worst at walk, taking his walks and one of the hitters who strikes out the most. And then last year, took massive, massive progress, and he ended up with 39 bombs. Could have had a 40-burger if he didn't get hurt at the end of the regular season. But still, a fantastic year for El Bombi, and I think that's on the table for Josh Young. They're both incredibly strong hitters, incredibly powerful hitters that hit home runs to all fields and if they are a little bit more selective they will get better pitches to hit if they get better pitches to hit they will have more home runs if they get more walks then it will be a just much better offensive output for them and makes this lineup even more deadly even more dangerous this was an incredibly good lineup that was really held down by Justin Steele having a phenomenal game really hate to see him get out of this game with an injury a thigh a, a quad injury actually no hamstring injury one, one of the parts of the thigh no the hamstring injury that sidelined him trying to field a bunt attempt from Leody Tavares that got Evan Carter to second base and he left this game after four and two-thirds innings he the Rangers couldn't do much of anything against Steele he is one of the best pitchers in baseball and I I, I gotta give a shout out to that guy who was pitching 
like the ace that he is, might have won the Cy Young Award if he didn't fumble the bag down the stretch last year, but this is a very, very good pitcher. Wish him a speedy recovery. Hope that injury is not too bad because you hate to see injuries at any time, especially to the stars of this game and especially on opening day. Coming up, we're talking about what went well for the Rangers on the pitching side, a vintage Nate Eovaldi performance and a bullpen the Rangers can trust now right after this word from our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tourney. Whether you're betting big on an upset or a one seed, it is time to go dancing on America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet bet wins. That's 200 bucks you can use on points, point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. Or you can pick on Major League Baseball. You can... Make put your money on Wyatt Langford to be rookie of the year. Maybe you can put your money on a 30 home run season for Travis Jankowski. I, I would not advise that. I don't think that's even possible. Um, but anyway, go check out all the other lines, college basketball, baseball, and more. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. Now, before we get more into this game, there is one note that I want to touch on when the Rangers released their opening day roster. This is something that Chris Young hinted at this week, um, and it happened before or after I had already recorded my Monday through Thursday pods. So, of uh, him hinting that the Rangers might not put Max Scherzer on the 60-day IL to start the season, which was not what I thought was going to be the case. The expected return date for Max Scherzer was going to be somewhere in the June range. That was the thought from the time he had the surgery, but he'd been recovering well. And well, Max Scherzer coming back earlier than expected from injury. It's something we saw literally last year in the ALCS and the World Series. But Max Scherzer was not on the 60-day IL. He was on the 15-day IL. So that means that he is going to come back, they expect, sometime probably before May uh, 24th. That would be the day that he could would could be eligible to return off the 60-day IL. But because he's on the 15-day IL, that means sometime before then is when they expect him to be ready. And Buster only was hinting that it was somewhere around the May 15th to May 25th uh, is, is around the new updated timeline for when Max Scherzer can return. And if, it, if Max Scherzer's back in the middle of May then that takes this lineup, this this whole team, this rotation, this every the one thing that everyone was doubting, especially if he comes back and is anywhere near his Max Scherzerness, which I think is definitely a possibility that's on the table. Then all those idiots who are picking the Rangers win 82 or 85 or 83 games, they're going to look real stupid real quick. But this team did have some errors in this one, a couple of mental errors from Heim, you know, not going out and getting the ball. I know he was right in saying this was a foul ball, but sometimes the umps screw up. And when it's a situation like that, you've got to be aware of it. you got to be more aggressive. Just make your point and then play like the, the call is wrong and then deal with the consequences afterwards. But he spent too much time complaining, and it's just not a good look. Yes, the umpire was wrong. Yes, Jonah was on the right. But at that in that situation, you've just got to put your head down and just go make the play. Just go make the play because letting a guy get two bases on a pass ball that didn't get that far away, didn't have some crazy kick for the go-ahead run at that point, it is a bad look even if you're right about the foul ball being a foul ball. I'm glad that he got a chance to redeem himself later. But the Rangers also just had a couple of toot plans, which was very unlike them. This was a smart base running team last year, not a super aggressive base running team, but this was just a smart team in general that didn't beat itself really at all last year. Like I'm strugg- really struggling to think of any toot plans. For if, you, if you don't know what a toot plan is, it's thrown out on the bases like a nincompoop, a very succinct, acceptable, wonderful phrase for a stupid base running mistake. A two bland example is, uh, well, Jose Altuve in game one of the ALCS, an all-time two plan for me. But Zeke Duran, you know, getting thrown out at third base when he led off the inning with a double, it could have been the, I believe, go-ahead run at that point and then wasn't. That's a bad look. And then Evan Carter getting double off in the bottom of the ninth inning with Corey Seager on deck. Now, Granted, that ball that was hit by by Marcus Simeon, that had a nine over 900 expected batting average. Over 900 on that ball. 
and uh, it ended up being an out and a double play. 940 expected batting average, excuse me, by Marcus Simeon on that ball that ended up being a double play. Maybe Evan Carter didn't know the situation. I don't think that's the case. I think he just thought that's for sure going to be a hit, and I'm going to go get to third, and then I'll be on third base as the winning run for Corey Seager, and that was not the case. So just a couple of, of things that the Rangers really need to clean up. It's not a good look having two plans like that. This is not a team that I think is going to have a bunch of those two plans and, and you know, just be a mentally unfocused team. Maybe having the ring day, maybe that was it. I, I don't know what it was. Just a couple of, of three, I guess, bad plays, bad mental plays that is not typical of the Rangers. But what is typical of the Rangers is getting a good start from Nate Eovaldi in a spot where they needed it. This felt like very vintage Nate Eovaldi. The velocity looked good. The swing and miss was really not there. Like, he's not a guy who's going to strike out 10 batters per nine anymore. That That's just kind of not how he's going to work. But only three strikeouts in six innings was a little concerning, but... He was getting weak enough contact. He was getting out of jams. He was getting really hit hard in the first couple innings. So I was getting a little worried because he had one swing and miss for the first three innings, I believe. Just one whiff. He ended up with three strikeouts, and I believe one of those was looking. But I was like, okay, okay, Nate Dog, You can't really survive on this getting hit really, really hard and not getting any swings and misses. But he got those swings and misses later on, and, you know, he did the dang job. And he went six innings. He Maybe could have gone a little bit more. I'm not sure he's fully built up to 100 pitches at this point. He threw 88 pitches and was through six innings and had only given up two runs and just one walk. That was Nate Eovaldi's performance. No home runs, no super hard hit balls, just one walk in those six innings. That was job done from the opening day starter. That was big dog Nate Eovaldi coming through against a honestly really tough Cubs lineup. This is a lineup that I didn't really think much about the Cubs were not a team that I thought very much about last year, a team that, you know, almost made the playoffs, but didn't quite. And I didn't realize how much of an amazing second half say a Suzuki had a new Hap was a good hitter. Bellinger's a good hitter. Morrell is a very good hitter and, and having Swanson as their number five hitter. This is a good, deep, talented lineup. And then you go down to Bush and Horner and well, Magical and Gomes aren't, aren't that great, but still this is a deep, talented lineup and a, a good, good club with a good manager who are facing off against a very good pitcher who happened to break their way of, of not having to face Justin Steele for six innings, really wish him all the best. And that's never how you want those things to go, but still the Rangers did catch a break and, and took advantage and, and getting a, a good Nate Evaldi start on opening day when the Rangers were revealing their banner. Well, that was just such an obvious thing to happen because when have you known Nate Eovaldi to not show up in the biggest way, on the biggest stage, in the games where the Rangers have the most eyes on them, when they want to win the most? That is when Nate Eovaldi thrives. And you know who else thrived in this one? The Rangers bullpen. Coming up, we're talking about having a reliable bullpen. I know it's just one game, but it feels like the day for overreaction because that's what opening day is for. Right after this word from our sponsors. Now, I said that at the top of the show, this Rangers team is not the 2023 World Series champ. The 2024 Rangers are not the 2023 Rangers. They are better. And it took one game. Well, actually, I already knew it before the season. But it took one game to kind of confirm those suspicions. And the real reason, the main reason the Rangers are better than they were for the home stretch, for the the full season of 2023, is because you're having a full year of White Langford, Evan Carter. Stop. Full stop. That's the main reason why this team is going to be better this year is because those two rookies played a combined, what, 22 games in the regular season last year, and you're going to get hopefully combined 300 games from them this year. We'll see how injuries stack up and how much, how often they're playing and how many off days they get, but I'm hoping for about 150-ish from each, and they're both very good. But another reason why I think this team is so much better than last year is because the bullpen for the entirety of the regular season, the whole season, was hot dookie garbage. And that's me putting it nicely. They were horrendous in extra innings, horrendous in one-run games. 
And it's the reason they didn't win the AOS by about seven, eight, nine, ten games. Is because of that. They were two and eight in extra inning games last year. They were fourteen and twenty two in one run games last year. Well, Rangers are one and zero in one run games and extra inning games to start this year. What a delightful change. What a delightful change from last year, where every second that the bullpen was in a game, you were holding your breath, you were peeing your pants, you were pacing and screaming and gnashing and weeping and gnashing of teeth the whole nine yards while any reliever was in the game at any point during the regular season last year. There was a stretch where you felt kind of safe with Will Smith, but did you really? I don't know that I particularly did. And then in comes this bullpen in inning number seven. The first guy out the pen is Josh Spores. And you think, okay, all right, maybe this is the situation. This is going to be where Spores is. Maybe maybe it was, you know, who he was facing, who the lineup was was going to be for that inning. But I think seventh inning, Josh Spores, eighth inning, Kirby Yates, ninth inning, Jose LeClerc. I, I felt really good about that. And then you go to David Robertson in the 10th, who apparently is now throwing a two seamer which was being tracked by StatCast as a changeup because he has never thrown a two-seam fastball. It was a 96-mile-an-hour they called the changeup. That's not a changeup. That was a fastball with some arm-side tailing action that he got a called third strike on because the batter said, what? He he doesn't throw that pitch. That's, that's not what David Robertson throws. He throws a cutter. Everybody knows this. He spent time with Mario Rivera. He's the cutter guy. That's his whole thing. And here he is out here in his, what, age 38 season throwing a new pitch because why not? And getting four shutout innings. I'm counting this as four shutout innings from the bullpen because I am not counting that run by Leclerc, which somehow is count as, counted as an earned run. I think that's absolute garbage that that's an earned run because of that wild pitch. That's a travesty. Maybe travesty is, is dramatic, but it's 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 game one. It's it's time for dramatics. But Josh Boar is coming in, allowing a couple of hits, but getting into danger with two outs, but getting out of it because he's Josh Spores and he is still riding that confidence high. Kirby Yates looked absolutely fantastic. That is a huge win for the Rangers if he pans out and ends up being fantastic. Love what I saw from him, getting lots of swings and misses, getting lots of called third strikes, that splitter looking quite nasty. Uh, I was I was very impressed by the first outing from Mr. Kirby Yates and David Robertson and Jose Leclerc looking like he is still riding that confidence high from last year. A 95 and a half mile an hour fastball for Leclerc. That's about the velocity I'm wanting to see from him. He looked pretty darn good, got some whiffs on the changeup and on the fastball and had one of the most beautiful Third strikes, a slider that was just, it, you literally could not have placed it any more perfectly for a called third strike. Kirby Yates was looking uh, fantastic in this one, uh, getting a couple whiffs, one on the splitter, one on the four-seamer, which was just very nice to see. It's nice to have a reliable reliever. I don't know if he's going to be 2019 Kirby Yates. Rangers don't need him to be. I don't think he expects to be, but he looks fully healthy now and is very, very promising. And here we go with Josh Boris getting some swings and misses on the curveball and the slider and every single breaking ball that Josh Boris throws that gets a called strike will remind you every single time, whether it's the slider, whether it's the curveball, more the curveball because that, that was the final pitch of the 2023 season. But every called strike and every called third strike i don't know if you're gonna be like me and think oh look there's a curveball for strike three that josh spores caught through oh doesn't that remind you of when the pitch he threw before he spiked his glove against the arizona diamondbacks i know it's going to remind me every single time and i think that will make me love josh spores even more and then the rangers getting two extra innings and and having all these setbacks and having that wild pitch nonsense and having um some frankly not so generous calls, especially in that plate appearance from White Langford, which it's it's hard to, to whine and moan about the strike zone in game one, especially when the Rangers were also getting some very generous calls because of Jonah Heim's excellence as a pitch framer. One thing that I don't want is robot umps because Jonah Heim is an incredible pitch framer and the Rangers have benefited from it a lot. So it's it's hard to, it's a little, you know, 
hypocritical to to throw your hands up at at the up and saying, "Hey, hey, what? Why? Why? Why do we not get every single call as opposed to just you know most of them?" But still, this team battling through that adversity, battling through giving up a <clears throat> a go ahead run in the ninth inning like that from your closer, just a really disheartening way to go about it. And then to to say, "All right, here comes El Blondie, here comes Travis Jankowski." A guy with what I think about three career home runs. It's it's I think it's actually twelve, but still he comes in and he absolutely mashes one. It works a great plate appearance. That whole plate appearance was fantastic from him. And then he mashes one over the right field fence for a game tying home run. And then the Rangers battle back and battle back and battle back, and then get the walk off from Heim. A beautiful, beautiful game a beautiful team game it just kind of reminds you why this team was so darn good last last year is because they're incredibly mentally tough incredibly resilient they know what their deal is they know what they're about and they are about it they go about it consistently they don't try and do too much they don't try and be someone that they're not they just know who they are how they go about things and they trust that that's good enough to kick everyone's butts and to win World Series, plural. Because that's what this team is trying to do. That's what I think this team is going to do. And just some quality, quality at-bats from everyone all throughout the lineup. Even Zeke Duran with a couple of two blends and a near play on what was one of the go-ahead hits from the Cubs. I think that maybe Nathaniel Lowe would have made that play over at first base, but it's a difficult play. It was a very difficult play, but I think for the most part, he did a really good job in scooping a couple of of difficult throws at first base, a position he has barely played. Getting in that lineup on opening day, I think, was a nice sign of respect for Ezekiel Duran. I think he definitely earned it with what he did for this team last year and what I think he will continue to do for this team this year. Love Zeke Duran. I love him getting a chance. And just the, everybody in this lineup, everybody in this team doing something to get themselves into position to win. That was the hallmark of this team all last year. It's going to be the hallmark of this team all this year. Everybody, 1 through 26 on on the roster, and then whoever else comes up from the minor leagues or off the injured list or whatever, it's an everybody effort. That's why this team was so good last year. It's, it's why they play so hard for each other. It's one of the things that is really hard to instill in a clubhouse, and the Rangers did it. And bringing Bruce Bochy in just kind of solidified it. Bruce Bochy wasn't the only reason why the Rangers have such a a good you know, core beliefs, core just values as a team and just a good clubhouse vibe. It's not just Bochy. It's the everybody in this room. It's the front office doing their research on the guys that they brought in and just everybody buying into the culture, the team fit. They know what they're about. They are strictly business. They are here to win baseball games, to be better than you, and then to go home and be kind of boring about it for the most part and then occasionally have some fun. But for the most part, be about their business and stand on business like Adolis Garcia did with that beautiful first home run of the season. I thought that Josh Young was going to be the first one to hit a home run this season because he's facing a lefty. Josh Young destroys lefties. But of course, it was Adolis Garcia. Of course, it was a game tying home run. And of course, he had a beautiful bat flip because that's what Adolis Garcia does. A two for four day with a big old walk. Big old strikeout, a big old home run. That is just the way Adolis Garcia plays. He will be in the cleanup spot for the Rangers all year. Being sandwiched by Josh Young and Wyatt Langford at this point, I like that for this lineup. I like the depth of this lineup. I like everything about this team. Just going in, winning a championship year zero of the contention cycle with a half of Max Scherzer, no Jacob deGrom, and a lineup full of guys who can just absolutely rake and trust each other to have great plate appearances. So when one of them doesn't come through, they know someone behind them is going to get the job done. And on day one of this new season, that's exactly what happened. And what I think is going to happen for a long, long time throughout the season, maybe up to 94 or five or heck, this team might win a bazillion games. It's opening day the time for optimism the rangers are the reigning world series champs they are wearing their gold gear all week and 
and they just raised the first flag, hopefully of many, that will indeed fly forever. That's going to do it for today's show. Thank you all so much for listening all week. We'll be back on Monday to talk about the rest of this opening weekend series. But until next time, don't forget to enjoy World Series champion Texas Rangers baseball.